Thank you guys for listening to today's show. I'm so happy to be here with you. This is Coach Dana Cavalier talking to you about high performance living, a topic that most of us only wonder about and we don't actually live. All right, guys, so we're back, and today's topic, we're going to talk about confidence, and really, it's a critical topic because you can't do anything without it, and well, I should take that back. You can do some things without it, but you're not going to be successful at it. For me, if you want to be successful at anything, it starts with having confidence because confidence is actually believing in oneself, and if you believe in yourself, no matter what's thrown at you, you will have a better chance of survival and execution at that task or whatever lies in front of you. So it's all about building your confidence. Now, I think when we talk about confidence, many people view it as arrogance and a cockiness and a swag. And in all my years working with the Yankees and working in baseball with some of the best players that have played the game, these guys had a confidence that was scary. You know, when you walk next to a guy like Derek Jeter, the confidence starts with his posture. It then starts with how he looks at you and how he addresses you. And then he takes that onto the field with him with a winning mindset and a mindset of success. He's stepping into the batter's box already having beaten the pitcher because in his mind, he's already seen himself as successful. If he were to get out, it would almost be that he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe that that guy got him out because he's that much better than that guy. And it's an incredible perspective. And if you think about it, whether it's going into a meeting or it's going to take some sort of a test or exam or stepping into the batter's box for your first at bat, all of those situations require a phenomenal and a huge amount of self confidence. Now, I emphasize the word self because I don't think you can get confidence from the outside. I know if you watch a motivational video or you see something motivational, you read a motivational story, it gives you a temporary feeling of confidence, but the reality is you're going to have to keep reading and keep watching or even keep surrounding yourself with a good therapist in order to keep that situational confidence. And that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about building innate confidence, confidence from within, confidence to where when somebody meets you, they feel it. It's an air. It travels with you and it doesn't leave you based on situation. Now, let's talk about some ways that we could improve our confidence. And I've always had some arguments with motivational speakers because they went against what I believe. And I believe that you cannot attain temporary confidence that will sustain itself over the long haul. I've always had an issue with this. Now, some things that we could do in order to achieve greater confidence, I'm going to get into some of the other things later, but the most important thing that you can do is be honest with yourself. If you're coming from a place of dishonesty, it's going to be impossible to truly have a level of trust and confidence within yourself because you're going to be using energy to hide things. You're going to be using energy to pretend to be someone or something that you're not. So for me, confidence always began from the position of love thyself or truly appreciating yourself and not beating yourself up and being uh, almost a, a victim to yourself. You can always see somebody that doesn't have a lot of confidence by how they communicate. If they have a victimist mentality, one of always being defeated by others, it's always somebody else's fault. That is a key indicator of a lack of confidence. And when you put that person in a high level situation or a situation that requires higher levels of confidence, you'll often get the chance to watch them melt before your very eyes. The person that may not be the loudest in the room, that maybe sits in the back, a little more perceptive, takes everything in, oftentimes is the guy that will 
show you or gal that shows you the most amount of confidence because they don't feel the need to use their mouth in order to demonstrate confidence. They demonstrate confidence within their actions. So when it comes back full circle to how do you love yourself more, Most of that starts with understanding yourself and getting a greater understanding of who you really are and identifying the times in which you're putting yourself out there to be something that you're not. Think about your current day. Think about your current week. How many situations were you in where you lied or you were dishonest with yourself to look good for somebody else? And that's where we get in the most trouble, when we live our lives to look good through the eyes of others. And that's what we really want to pay attention to and we really want to get away from as fast as possible because if we can't get away from that, we're going to be unable to lift our own internal confidence. Now, going back to watching motivational videos and stories and things like that, that's all positive. Those are all positive inputs and that is fantastic, but it cannot be the exclusive driver of you lifting your overall confidence. What I do believe in, though, is high levels of self-talk. Are you saying negative things about yourself to yourself? Are the patterns that run through your head negative or positive? And the more positivity that you could bring to your thought process and mindset as it relates to where you currently stand and where you're currently going, and even where you previously were, you're going to have a greater opportunity for success long-term in building your overall confidence. For me, confidence is based on positivity. Every positive experience that you have will lend itself to creating more confidence. So, does that mean we shy away from positions that will possibly be a little bit more difficult? No. But if we can challenge ourselves to go into some waters that may be a little bit deeper than our liking, and we have success swimming there, we will then have a confidence elevation. And that's what it's really all about. Constantly working to elevate our confidence. How many times do you remember you were possibly nervous about making a phone call? And after you made that call, you felt a lot better. That's because your confidence went up. How many times were you afraid to go in and talk to your boss? And after you went and spoke to them, even asking for a raise, you felt a lot better. Your confidence went up. The more uncomfortable situations you could put yourself in, the greater the chances of success. And most importantly, the greater the chances of your confidence elevating. And as we said, with greater confidence comes greater results. And that's really the truth, guys. If you can't elevate your confidence, the chances of you elevating your life are going to be much lower. And that's what we want to focus on. Life elevation. How do we live a higher performing life? And it starts between our ears. Some people call it attitude. I call it mindset. But if we can constantly work to elevate our confidence, we will win in the end. And our achievements will go up as well without actually trying. So when you see that person out there that's constantly trying and pushing and fighting and fighting and fighting, a lot of times you can look towards their internal confidence and it won't be as high as it needs to be in order to attain and gain the things that they're working for. So confidence is something that I want you to really focus on this week. Let's start by again, remembering how we talk to ourselves. Make it positive. Surround yourself with positive people. Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to others. Be who you are. If you're overweight, you're overweight. If you don't have the best hair, you don't have the best hair, but that's okay. Love yourself. By loving yourself, you'll have greater confidence in the long run. So really work to put all the stories that you tell yourself on paper, all the lies and all the things that you hide behind. Put those on paper and have an agreement with yourself that you're no longer going to live in those lies and you're going to go ahead and put yourself out there to free yourself and therefore start the quest of greater confidence. You can do it. Focus on it. Make it your priority. But remember, if there's two people in the room in any sort of negotiation, fight, or anything, for that matter, the person with the most confidence always wins. Now, I don't want you to go out there and get into fights to prove your confidence. 
But what I want you to do is start proving your confidence by taking on uncomfortable situations each and every day. And if you do that, you'll be very happy with your results in the end. You won't need to listen to motivational speakers. You'll just have the confidence that sits within yourself because it became a piece of you, a part of you. The confidence became who you are, a confident person. So you have your assignment for the week. Now go ahead and get after it, guys. Train your mindset like a pro and make sure that you remember the importance of confidence.